So in general, I think uh, a question that cannot be treated, uh, in, in, a, a question cannot be treated as meaningful or deserving of an answer simply by the test of following rules of grammar. That right? you can uh, construct a uh, grammatical, grammatically correct sentence and seems to convey something doesn't necessarily mean that it's a valid question with a meaningful answer. And also other why questions like uh, why, why, why are the metals hard and uh, vegetables soft? Okay. So now uh, this, this has, a, has a mixed flavor depending on the, on the context in which you view them. From the point of view of uh, say condensed matter physicists, uh, it can be a serious question. Why, what is it that makes in terms of the atomic structure etc. What is it that makes the uh, metals hard and the, uh, other, other materials soft? On the other hand, in a, in a lay context, the question is uh, pointless and we simply accept that the metals have, have to be hard and in fact we depend ourselves uh, on the metals being ha hard and the uh, vegetables uh, being, being soft. Okay, that's about the importance of questions and the variety of uh, situations that can arise. Now, let me begin, uh, so the, my next section here is uh, pitfalls in the process. Let me begin this section with uh, a quotation from uh, Ibn al Haytham. Have you, how many of you have heard this name, Ibn al Haytham? Have you heard the name? Okay, oh, only a few people. So, this, uh, I, I think uh, uh, it's a kind of uh, sad situation that uh, the, there's uh, <coughs> either we know only either Western names or ancient Indian names, Myth at all, and uh, somehow. The wider world, I mean, from the wider world, there is a sort of neglect about uh, uh, what happened. Uh, Ibn al Haytham happens to be uh, one of the very important figures in Arab, Arab science. In fact, in, uh, uh, he's uh, <coughs> from the uh, 10th century, uh, I think born in 1965 in uh, uh, Basra in, in Iraq. And uh, by some accounts, he's actually uh, the earliest and uh, the practitioner of uh, uh, scientific method and fact called father of the scientific, scientific method. Uh, he worked, uh, did some very important works, work on optics and uh, uh, the idea that light uh, <coughs> first falls on the object, comes to the eye, the clarity of how the uh, uh, path traverses causing the vision sort of comes through clearly first time in the work of uh, in the time. Okay, so here is a quotation from uh, Ibn al uh, The duty of a man who investigates the writing of the writing of scientists is uh, working with uh, describing it in a limited context. Now, uh, <coughs> the duty of, of, of the man who investigates the writing of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads and attack it from every side. He should also suspect himself as he performs this critical examination of it so that he may avoid falling into either prejudice or leniency. This is something uh, uh, I think every scientist should keep in mind. It is <coughs> uh, needs to question the uh, validity when, when, somebody, some, I mean, when you are uh, studying a certain principle or trying to understand uh, the work done, you need to understand it by questioning every aspect of it. Um, that's why he, uh, what he means when uh, to making himself an enemy. Of course, the original would be in Arabic and uh, they, this is a particular translation. Uh, the rough translation could have made, been made differently. So, in the, the gist of it is that uh, he emphasizes that the, you need to question the uh, <coughs> uh, statements that are made from every angle. And in doing so, you, you should even suspect whether uh, you are going to be uh, go, going to be uh, inclined to take sides uh, in one way, one way or other because of leniency or prejudice. That also you need to guard against. That's the uh, uh, step, I mean the, the second part. So you should also suspect himself as he performs his critical examination of it, so that he may avoid falling into either prejudice or leniency. Uh, in practice, however, it's, uh, it's a far cry to be able to meet such obligation in pursuit and uh, maybe even he recognized it, but uh, uh, 
made it uh, in order to make it the sort of uh, ideal uh, in, the, in the pursuit of truth. The practitioners are all too uh, human and prone to biases of various kinds, and these effects they, these affect both the choice of the questions and the findings. Now, uh, it will be worth uh, categorizing some of these and uh, sort of I uh, have a brief uh, on some of the possibilities in this respect. Now, the <coughs> depending on, uh, so uh, first of all, uh, the one bullet item that I have here is the predilections arising from personal motivations, preferences born out of professional considerations, biases arising from parochial tendencies. Now, uh, I'll just give uh, some examples of each of them and uh, we'll go and uh, open it to discussion. Now, uh, in the course of uh, our early development, we acquire a variety of prejudices, preferences, and likes and dislikes. Uh, when a person engages himself or herself in, a scientific, in scientific pursuits, the uh, projects as well as the reported findings may be affected by, by these. Now, uh, there is a curious, uh, interesting story about this in which actually it is a happy end. That is, uh, the, uh, by some accounts, uh, Copernicus was inclined to afford the heliocentric theory out of faith in sun god, quote, quote, sun god. So, uh, unlike the Christian, uh, the general Christian world around the, the believer of sun god, and this seems, seems to have motivated him to uh, look into the possibility of uh, heliocentric theory. And uh, fortunately, it, it, as I said, it's a happy end because it turned out to be true and it could be confirmed. On the other hand, uh, uh, similarly, uh, there is also another example. That similarly, it also uh, that uh, some early works in bacteriology were fudged. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, in works in bacteriology, uh, findings were fudged purely out of uh, personal conviction. So people have, so you have a, before you start, you have a certain belief that something uh, should be true. And uh, the results were, uh, uh, findings were presumably uh, fudged. So these, these are instances where the biases led to uh, breaking away from dogma, so then as uh, could be confirmed. However, it could happen that personal biases could lead to uh, Holding, uh, holding on to theories which may eventually be proved wrong, wasting fair amount of uh, time and effort. Uh, I am not uh, uh, discussing, <coughs> I could not think of uh, examples, maybe you can think of examples or maybe I will be able to think of examples that uh, uh, later stay and add to the blog. So, but, uh, the, uh, I just wanted to highlight this uh, possibility. Now, the professional issues uh, is, is something more serious. <coughs> there are a variety of professional pressures which lead to withholding or fudging uh, one's findings. So, <coughs> uh, Gauss, uh, you all of whom you all of you have heard, uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss, uh, he was aware of the existence of uh, non Euclidean geometries before the geometries were actually discovered by the Wachowski and Bode in the time. Uh, 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 but uh, he did not come out with, with it and uh, the re reason is quite curious, he feared that it, it would seem rather crazy and harm his reputation. So he felt that he, if he went to talk of uh, non-Euclidean uh, non geometries, did I say yeah, non-Euclidean geometries, they, the people might uh, think he is going senile or something. So, uh, <coughs> Another uh, example that I have recounted here is apparently the uh, uh, medical de determined the uh, charge of the electron by uh, the something called the uh, oil drop experiment. And it apparently it turns out that uh, the, the, uh, the charge that he determined is uh, actually higher. And so there are some uh, subsequent experiments, I mean, uh, some experiments are repeated as you know. And uh, uh, many of the successive experimenters adopted values with small differences from many Millikan's uh, value. And when, when they, in their findings, they would usually discard things which are away from uh, Millikan's value and so on. The average would still be uh, the, 
uh, would be smaller than uh, Millikan's value, but not adequately. And apparently, this the process sort of continued for almost uh, 20 years before the value stabilized and people knew the correct charge of uh, electron with whatever accuracy they were. So, uh, there is a certain sense of uh, image for what will happen if you, if you give your, your actual, actual findings uh, is, is something that bothers uh, professional uh, researcher. So, uh, there is also another aspect, when a researcher takes up a project, there are, there are also pressures to bring out something interesting out of it. I mean, if you, you want to write a paper, you uh, want to make sure that somehow the editors and referees will uh, like it for one reason or another. So uh, now, uh, not so much in mainstream science, but for instance, an anthropologist is more likely to highlight positive qualities of his uh, subject type. So, uh, or uh, unless he's negatively disposed, in which case the negative qualities will will be highlighted. Uh, whereas uh, the um, the opposite side, kind of uh, observations that will be possible and might in fact have been made would so would be. Uh, uh, set aside. Now, uh, such a thing, uh, uh, I want to make a small provocative statement here. I think such a thing, in fact, uh, seems to have happened in the, uh, uh, with the Indologists, early Indologists from the West who stud uh, made, uh, uh, studied Indian uh, works, sciences, and so on. The, there seems to have been an exaggerated enthusiasm about uh, the Indian uh, works. And uh, so, I mean, there is a, uh, uh, not exactly, uh, one could either call it uh, patronizing in some way or uh, uh, generating the positive aspects. And then uh, the, this led eventually to, uh, to other people, other uh, workers from the West with a, with a backlash. So then there, then there was very aggressive questioning about why, why, uh, how do you believe that, how do you believe this, etc. And then, uh, at this, by this time, the various Indian workers started coming in, and they were going into a backlash against the uh, those who were uh, against etc. So uh, the, uh, the case in point is the uh, early works, which are which are uh, uh, some of some of them are they uh, use the word romantic, romantic, uh, romantic attachment to uh, the. Uh, subject that uh, they are studying and they uh, tended to exaggerate uh, the significance of uh, what, what they actually uh, found. Uh, okay, so <coughs> yeah, so uh, that, that, that's a kind of professional uh, motivation that can uh, that can detract from going into the actual uh, reporting into actual workings. There are also other motivations coming, uh, coming which is probably even more serious and uh, this, uh, coming from uh, who is funding the project. Now this is something of a big uh, nuisance as you may be aware in medical sciences etc. Uh, lobbies uh, for very, uh, to, uh, in favor of certain drugs or the, for instance to promote uh, tobacco so they, they would like to suppress that information about the harmful effects of tobacco whereas uh, the advantages, uh, whatever they may be, can, can be generated. So, I mean, so there, <coughs> there, there are various pitfalls in the research of this, uh, yeah, in this fashion. And uh, the third uh, bullet item that I had was the parochial issues. Now, though this, not, uh, this does not, uh, may not be affecting the mainstream science in, uh, in this way, in the study of uh, history or anthropology or sociology, the parochial considerations of the, 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 the so-called nationalist, the people want to be patriotic, so they want to prove something that their culture was the greatest, uh, that they had the superior uh, uh, abilities, etc. And uh, this motivation sort of reflects in the, in the way they uh, pick questions and answer the way they answer them and so on. So, uh, Similarly, uh, here I have made a comment that many projects are coming up on exploring beneficial effects of Gomutra and etc. And in the current environment, one would wonder how much credibility can be granted to the findings which in any case are unlikely to be open to scientific debates. So the <coughs> environment and uh, the uh, general result in order for the sort of in a way sort of it also affects the uh, connects with uh, who is funding the, the 
uh, well, funding is an aspect, but here there is a certain uh, issue of pride of uh, uh, collective, like the society, culture, etc., that can uh, detract from the actual finding. The scientist or the actual fact finding mission, the fact acquisition of knowledge really needs to be read of uh, all such considerations as uh, in the exam as uh, very clearly sort of emphasized that is uh, okay now th this is the uh, sort of general thing and this here my uh, notes end but i want to make some concluding uh, remarks before uh, we we'll open it to discussion so here this i have dealt, uh, dealt mostly with only the, uh, the collective aspect now the uh, in, the, in my title for what science entails, I had in mind also what it entails at the individual level. So at the individual level also we, uh, we have questions and that we need to uh, get answers of some sort. Of course all the kind of testability etc. may not be uh, practical. So we need to have ways of uh, determining uh, <coughs> what course to follow. So it is uh, and uh, I, I do not have any satisfactory answer, but the only thing that seems to be uh, uh, that come, you know, seems to come to mind is that we need to develop a credible media, a big group of people who can who, who can be relied upon to uh, to have to come up with good answers, and uh, which again, if necessary, you can always cannot always check each hypothesis at an individual level, but uh, with there should be, and. It should be such that in, in principle you are able to check, you are able to tally with, tally with other sources with that. Now at least in terms of uh, uh, sources or uh, available knowledge, which is, there is no, no doubt. I mean, on the internet you can get a whole variety of answers. It's only the question of how to uh, put them together with that, you know, and make good sense of the various answers that you can get. And uh, maybe the, the more ideas need to come up on uh, about, about it, and uh, we need to develop how uh, develop some sort of mechanism by which, uh, at individual level, we can uh, uh, you can you can have satisfactory answers to our questions based on uh, inputs that you can get from uh, uh, reliable sources. So I, uh, I think with this, I'll close my uh, uh, words. Uh, maybe I exceeded my uh, time, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, thank you. Thank you. so uh, I would, of course, uh, we will have uh, sufficient time for discussions. Uh, just uh, uh, before going for discussions, I am not, of course, trying to summarize uh, any of the issues, but I am glad. I mean, if you had, uh, I'm sure if you had more time, you would have covered much more because he actually picked up a very, very difficult uh, topic in trying to see how, you know, the, the culture of science actually, and he also looked at multiple ways in which the culture and our beliefs actually gets influenced. Uh, for example, I mean, he first of all, of course, uh, has put the context in the history and uh, also talked about the most important tenets of science, you know, from the nature of science. He discussed about causality, he discussed about uh, falsifiability as a criterion of uh, uh, demarcation, and uh, and also he particularly mentioned about, you know, because everybody thinks that you now science explains, as if religion doesn't explain, or tradition doesn't explain, or something like that. And therefore, in that process, he very carefully uh, uh, draw our attention to the need of how specific aspects of science actually get addressed and therefore we should better call them as how questions rather than why questions. And I think that's also an important uh, uh, point to take note of. And of course he also mentioned that uh, uh, everything that looks grammatically correct or logically correct doesn't mean that it, 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 it should be uh, taken out as uh, the thing. And of course uh, I'm very glad that he also mentioned uh, about uh, the uh, origin of Western science and the Arabic books, particularly uh, uh, Alvin uh, Hetham has actually been uh, mentioned also as uh, uh, one of the important things. In fact, uh, a lot of scholars actually have talked about that, uh, you know, uh, they, they were the custodians of knowledge from India, from Greek, as well as from Eastern uh, Asia, and they have been actually translating and considering the whole thing, and therefore, when after the end of the black uh, 
uh, whatever dark ages, the, the Europeans actually had to learn a lot from the Arabian writings. And therefore, the influence of Arabian writings on the Western science is not a small thing, it's a very substantial thing. And I'm very happy that point also has been raised. And of course, then he actually came to a very important thing towards the end, and which is all about uh, how even science itself could be uh, put by multiple pressures. Uh, he talked about professional pressures, he talked about prejudices and biases that individuals <coughs> need, as human beings would have. So, so science itself is not uh, completely immune from uh, all of that. And he talked about the influence of funding, of course, a very important and financial uh, aspects make a lot of difference. In fact, uh, we end up doing some other research in place of something else because of the availability of funds. And also, lastly, he also <coughs> talked about uh, directed issues that are influencing, such as patriotism and nationalism as well. So a lot of issues. I mean, he covered a lot of ground. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you uh, have uh, questions to ask. Uh, so uh, I would uh, take questions based on the way how you raise your hands. Uh, maybe